The chair recognizes the sergeant at arms. The sergeant at arms announces the presence in the chamber of General Lori J. Robinson, the commander of U.S. Northern Command and the North American Aerospace Defense Command. She is escorted by Major General Glenn H. Curtis, the Adjutant General of Louisiana, and the President of the Adjutant's General Association of the United States, Major General H. Michael Edwards, the Adjutant General of Colorado, and the Vice President Air of the Adjutant's General Association of the United States, and Major General Linda L. Singh, the Adjutant General of Maryland. With the Sergeant at Arms, please escort our distinguished guest and her party to the platform. Our next speaker this morning is going to share her vision for one of the, for her vision to us, one of the National Guard's key federal partners in domestic operations. She also represents something else. I'm going to take a little point of liberty here, is that to have our first female combatant commander warms my heart, ma'am. I won't go on like I really want to. But I know that she grew up, up without mentors that looked like her, and to get to where she is is pretty phenomenal. And I think she has shown so many women military members that they too have no glass ceiling. It has broken, it is shattered, and in pieces around General Robinson's feet. Without any further ado, General Robinson, Thanks. thank you. Thank you. So much. That was so sweet. That was so sweet. Thank you. I know. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you so much. Thank you. Um, thank you. I can't, I can't even, I see friends up in the front row. It's so, oh my goodness, hi guys. I mean, I don't even know how to begin to say thank you so very much. First, for the invitation, and second, for the privilege to stand in, in front of this amazing group. And third, because I know how important our guard is to the defense of the United States, to the defense of the homeland. And I want to spend a couple of minutes with you today to tell you the roles and responsibilities that we have given uh, to the guard, not because it's the guard, because it's part of the total force. And I'm so proud and honored to be the commander of NORAD and to be the commander of US Northern Command. Yesterday, we had a ceremony uh, to talk about the 15th year of uh, since 9-11. And to be sitting there as the commander of NORAD and U.S. Northern Command on such a fateful day was amazing to me. To sit back and remember uh, the privilege that I've had to, to fly NORAD missions. And I see Craig McKinley here, and, and he and I met when I was at Tinker. And, and to, to do those things, you know, that are defending our homeland, and then Northern Command born out of 9-11. So let's go to the next slide. 
so NORAD history, 58 years. I mean, 58 years ago, uh, you know, that we started NORAD. And, and it, you know, it's out of the Russian thread. And if you think about Rus what Russia has done, you know, for those of us that are old like me, Russia was a threat when I was a young pup. We used to do intercepts with them. We used to look and see the things to take care of them. And then they had their economic problems and they, we didn't hear from them a lot. But now we're hearing back from Russia again. And I would tell you, NORAD has become even more and more important as we sit back and we look at not just the defense of the United States, but the defense of North America. We have the privilege right now, Canada is going through their defense policy review, as everybody knows. And we'll look and see what happens out of all of that and how NORAD continues to evolve and will evolve after its 58 year history. Next slide, please. NORTHCOM. NORTHCOM was born out of 9-11. 9-11 is what made us say, hey, we worry about all these combatant commands around the world, but why don't we worry about the combatant command today? Yesterday, I know each and every one of us took a moment and thought about where were we the day that airplane hit that first tower? What were we doing? What were we thinking? But I would tell you, as much as NORTHCOM evolved and started based on 9-11, it has been shaped by Katrina. And that shaping by Katrina has also shaped our involvement as following the lead federal agencies with states and with local governments, and quite frankly, shaped our relationship with the National Guard. And I think we've only gotten better. It's been amazing. Next slide, please. This is the mission of NORAD, so North American Aerospace Defense Command. Aerospace warning, so where do we detect? Where do we see? What do we know? How do we see it? Where do we track it from? Whether it's from Alaska, whether it's from the west coast of California two years ago when Russia came within 38 miles of our western coast, um, whether it's from the east coast, from submarines. Those are the kind of things, aerospace warning. That's more maritime warning, but then aerospace control. How do we in Canada work together to defend the North American continent? Next slide, please. NORTHCOM, Homeland Defense. We'll talk a little bit about this, but you know, I tell everybody when I, in my last assignment as the Air Component Commander for Admiral Harris um, and worrying about Kim Jong-un and what he's doing, you know, I was um, unbelievably naive uh, when I thought, okay, we'll get our Aegis cruisers there, we'll have the Tippy Twos there in Japan and detect. But what I didn't realize was all the things that the NORTHCOM commander was responsible for from a ballistic missile defense perspective. Uh, and, and so it is just amazing. We'll talk about the guard um, help in this. Civil support, defense support to civil authorities. It is totally a mission I knew nothing about. I had no idea. I didn't realize all the things that we do as the Department of Defense and most importantly, what you do to support your local agencies. And then finally, um, theater security cooperation, understanding our relationship with Canada, Mexico, and the Bahamas. It's incredibly important, and it is a total force engagement. Next slide, please. So on the upper left-hand side, you can see Dan Hokinson. Dan is my deputy, yes. I said to General Lengel last week, um, while I'm very excited for um, the National Guard Bureau and Dan Hokinson, I'm very sad for NORTHCOM because he has been a huge hero for us. He has been just amazing. With his help with Oregon being a tag and understanding and helping with our playbooks as we do DISCA and as we work our way through um, natural disasters, he has been instrumental in this. And I'm so proud to have had the privilege to work with him. And I am so excited, Joe, for you and the National Guard Bureau, uh, should he be confirmed, uh, to come work for you because he is truly a guard treasure. So thank you for that. But my point to this is that the National Guard is integrated throughout the NORAD and NORTHCOM staff. The National Guard is integral to our watch, 
to our dual status uh, commanders course, to everything we do each and every day. And you know, I can walk up and down the hallways and I don't know who's active guard or reservist and that's the way we all want it. That's the way that we think it should be. And I am so proud, I am unbelievably proud uh, of all the hard work that everybody does each and every day uh, at the headquarters. But I wanted you to know that, and I wanted you to realize that I depend on expertise from the states. I depend on expertise each and every day, uh, no matter what the mission. So let's go through a couple of missions. Next slide. Noble Eagle, near and dear to my heart, right, General McKinley? Noble Eagle, I mean, I, I grew up, I, you know, the whole bit about defending our homeland after 9-11. I was telling this story the other day. I happened to live in Washington, D.C. when that happened. And I remember going from the utter chaos of everybody leaving Washington, D.C. to that night when there wasn't a car on the road, there wasn't an airplane moving, there was nothing happening. And the only thing I heard that night was the E3 swapping out and the fighters swapping out. And this is an amazing, Great guard mission. I depend on these guys each and every time the president moves. I depend on Noble Eagle folks, tanker, fighters, AWACS, to defend the TFRs that we put up. Noble Eagle is an incredible mission, and it's something that is truly a guard expertise each and every day. Next slide, please. Ballistic missile defense, who knew? I had no idea. I had no idea the guard part of this. Uh, about three weeks ago, I was in Alaska and I went to Fort Greeley. Uh, and I had the opportunity to watch the guardsmen at Fort Greeley as I would be making decisions in Colorado Springs, the actions that Fort Greeley was doing day in and day out, whether it was, hey, do we need to put the codes in? What are the things that we're doing? Or as you can see here on the right-hand side, how do we put the missile in the silo? Just to learn that very tactical experience of what happens at Fort Greeley and the Guardsmen was amazing to me. And it made me understand truly from the tactical level to the operational level to the strategic level and then you know, to the advising the Secretary of Defense on what we should do. Very integrated, very much a part, and very excited about what the Guard also does in Colorado Springs for ballistic missile defense. Um, it's an incredibly important. Next slide, please. The Arctic. Wow. I never really thought about the Arctic before. I hadn't really contemplated, you know, the importance of the Arctic. Yes, you know, we understand what's happening, but just um, this summer, for the first time, the Crystal Serenity went through uh, the Arctic and the Northwest Passage. And here's what's so incredibly important about that, is the guard role in search and rescue. Um, the concern everybody has is if something happens um, to a cruise ship, as an example, the Crystal Serenity, who's going to go after them? Who's going to get them? Well, it's the guard and the search and rescue capability and capacity uh, in Alaska. And it's something that uh, you know, we're going to rely on more and more. And it's something that I've had to learn more and more about. Um, in my last hat as the commander of um, PACAF, you know, I had the privilege to visit the guard unit in Alaska and all the search and rescue capability and capacity they have. And now understanding it from an operational perspective is totally different. And thinking about it in the way that where there's a place, there's no communications, there's not a lot of infrastructure, and there's a whole lot of ice. So I do worry about that. Next slide. So defense support to civil authorities. I told you, you know, I, I just did a commander's call earlier this week, and I talked a little bit about what I knew, what I've learned, and where we're going uh, on my last 13 weeks of my summer vacation, right? So in defense support to civil authorities, what I knew, nothing. Absolutely nothing. What I've learned, absolutely everything. And where we're going is getting better. You know, we talk about, you know, defense of the homeland and should there be a, 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 a horrible um, a tragedy happen. The practice that we had was up in uh, Oregon, Washington, and California, that there was in the exercise that we did called Arden Century, and that there was an earthquake followed by a tsunami, followed by subsequent earthquakes. 
Now that sounds pretty horrendous as far as I'm concerned. And as I sat there working our way through that exercise, what really struck me day in and day out through the whole week was one, that is an amazing event should it ever happen. But more importantly, what really struck me was the capability and capacity um, that the Guard brought to the state and to the cities right away. I mean, just absolutely right away. And I was amazed at the fact that we have playbooks, the Guard has playbooks, the Guard Bureau has playbooks, and that we're all working to try and synchronize everything that we can do so that in our darkest day, we together can bring some level of humanity and some level of normalcy to our families because that's what's really important is to try to get back to that and what you do each and every day for that is amazing and that whole exercise for a week was uh, astonishing to me. But not just that, but what I've learned over the last few weeks too, I've had the privilege to go to the southwest border and watch what the Guard does each and every day, whether it was in Texas, whether it was in Arizona or California, and to sit back and look at the things that, that you all bring to help our DHS partners, to support what they need every day so we can make sure that things are good. And, and is it perfect? No. But the things that you do every day to support them is incredible, and I was absolutely mesmerized. So again, I wanna say thank you so much, because this defense support to civil authorities, for those of us that are so used to being in charge, we're not, but we're there to help when asked, and that's what you do. Thank you so much. Next slide, please. So, this is another thing as I learned about um, you know, defense support to civil authorities, this whole national response framework, what it is that is expected of you, the understanding of your work for the governor and for the state and what it is that you do every day. And, and what it is so exciting is the fact that as we have moved out, you know, the fact that we're doing this all together and that we totally know that what's best, not just for today, but what's best for tomorrow, but it started right here. Next slide, please. So, you know, um, it's, the budgets aren't gonna get easier. The um, forces and, and the things that we're gonna ask of our forces isn't gonna get easier. And the thing that I totally believe from the bottom of my heart is that this is about the total force. This is about what we can do together as airmen and soldiers. This is about what we can do together, soldier, sailor, airman, marine, coast guardsmen, independent of you know, whether you're reservists or whether you're guardsmen or whether you're active duty. This is about our way forward because as we continue to work our way through this, I can tell you this. We need each and every single one of us. We don't just need you, me, them, we need us. And so I want you to know that that is the, my sounding call. That is the thing that I look forward to each and every day, side by side, moving forward to do what's in best for our nation. Next slide, please. NORAD, as I mentioned, it looks like Canada is gonna be, uh, is redoing their defense policy review. So what is it that we can do for the National Guard to help us in, def in defending uh, North America? As we get insight into what Canada is thinking, we will get insight about what, how we, the total force, are gonna support Canada. Next slide. And finally, defense support to civil authorities. You know, we are working on all the playbooks for all the different regions. We're working with each of the states uh, and each of the governors, and we're working so that next year when we have Arden Century and we look at what happens in a catastrophe in New York, can you imagine? I'm gonna need you. I'm gonna need your thoughts. I'm gonna need you, New York to help, but I need everybody's expertise. Because again, this isn't just me and this isn't just you. This totally is us. Next slide. And so finally, I have to tell you, it has been an honor to be the commander, 
but more importantly, it has been an honor to understand what everybody brings to the NORAD and NORTHCOM mission. And what I have learned and reinforced everything that I have believed in is that it is the total force, and the things that you do each and every day for our nation is unbelievable. So I want to say thank you for what you do, thank you for what you're going to do, and I look forward to the privilege to coming out to your states and meeting with you. Thank you so much. Jennifer Robinson, thanks so much for taking time out of your, I'm sure, crazy busy schedule to be with us today. As a momentum of the occasion, I'd like to present to you this book titled What So Proudly We Hailed, the first biography of Francis Scott Key in 75 years. And as you are well aware, the, the words he penned over 200 years ago right here in this city became the lyrics for our national anthem. Yes, ma'am. Ma thank you so much for spending time thank with you. us. It's truly my privilege to have met you. Thank you, ma'am. Thank, thank you so much. Yes, ma'am. Thank, thank you. Thank you so much. Take it away. With the Sergeant at Arms, please escort our distinguished guest and her party from the podium. <laughs>